After overcoming their respective funks, Pikachu and Red prepared for the oncoming gym battle with Cerulean gym leader Misty. But even if they manage to get some new allies, can they succeed and win a gym badge? XXX. Chapter 6. A Tomboyish Mermaid. Guilt can really do a number on you. After Nidorino died, I blamed myself. I stayed cooped up in my pokey ball, too ashamed to face Red and Charmander because of what happened. The inside of my ball was like a small, comfortable room, but I hated it. It felt like being back in a cage again, all alone with no company. I figured that it was an acceptable punishment for what I had done. But then, something happened that I never expected. Red sent me out. He called for me. And when I was in trouble, he cried over me, like my life was worth worrying over. And then he started saying how he didn't want to lose me, how scared he was, how sorry he was that he couldn't do anything. I wound up crying alongside of him, because it was all my fault that he felt this way. I had to make it up to Red. I had to get stronger so I could protect him and make sure nothing bad happened to him, Charmander, and whoever was going to join us in the future. It was the least I could do for the trouble I caused. This spot should do. I stopped thinking when Red spoke. After leaving the Pokemon Center in Cerulean City, we headed back up north to that route with the bridge. I watched the boy as he sat down by the riverside and took a stick and string out from his bag. He tied one end of the string around the stick and the other end of the string around a berry that looked chewed up. I can afford to waste figgy berries. I hate these things. And if it can get as a water-type Pokemon, I won't complain. As in something that can swim, right? Red looked at me. I know what you're thinking. If we're going up against a water-type gym, why aren't we trying to catch a grass-type? Actually, I was wondering how that berry might taste. It's for coverage, mostly. Using moves that are effective against water-types is important, but it's also important to use Pokemon that can resist water-type moves. We'll catch a water-type first for the sake of resisting water-type attacks, and then we can catch a grass-type. I'll be counting on you to help with both of them since Charmander isn't here. I nodded. Right. You can count on me, Red. I sat down next to Red and watched as he lowered the berry into the river. This isn't a fancy fishing rod, or even a good one, but this should hopefully work well enough. We sat there for a long time. Red just stared down blankly at the water while I kept myself preoccupied by taking berries from his bag to eat. Between bites, I would look out into the tall grass growing in and around the water, keeping an eye out for Pokemon that wandered out of it looking for a fight. As adamant as I was about helping Red, I couldn't help being bored. I wished something would happen, and it did. As soon as I closed my eyes, I heard Red screaming followed by a loud splash. When I opened them, I found Red splashing in the river, shouting out loudly before sinking beneath the surface. Oh. No. Red. I jumped into the river to save my possibly drowning trainer, which was stupid, because I couldn't swim, either. So I wound up splashing around before sinking under the river's surface as well. Underwater. I saw Red also flailing and struggling to get back up to the surface. I struggled to move towards him, but before I could even get close, I saw something wrap around his neck just as I felt something wrap around my tail. I started to flail even harder before we were both pulled out of the water and dropped down onto the land. I started sputtering and coughing up water, and once all the water had left my lungs, I looked at the one who saved us. You. I bared my teeth the creature that stood before me. It was that creature from before. The blue one with the plant bulb on its back that spat poison at me and whipped me. How dare it show its face in front of me after what happened. Yes. Me. He spoke apathetically as gave me a blank faced expression similar to Red's. You nearly choked Red. I snapped. Red. Is that your owner's name? I only growled in response to his question. You're being awfully rude considering that I saved your life. Then again. I only saved you because you were making so much noise. The grass type Pokemon turned around and walked off into the tall grass. 
Why yeah. You better run. You, overgrown weed. I heard Red coughing next to me and turned see him spit up water as he got to his knees. Was that, what I think it was? I thought I saw, that Bulbasaur, he rubbed his neck a bit before continuing, I wonder why it saved us after we attacked it. Hey, that's right, you'd think that it would just stay there and watch us drown, but it bothered to save us, ah. M my hat. Red's exclamation of surprise made me jump. He started looking around frantically before finally looking at the river. Did it go down the river? Oh. No. What's the big deal? It's only a hat, right? Humans can just buy more, right? I asked. But of course, Red didn't understand a word. I cleared my throat to get his attention and pointed down the river. Why don't we go down the river to look at it? I asked slowly, as if that would help him understand. All right, Pikachu. If we go down the river, we might be able to find it. Red ran past me into the tall grass and I followed behind, happy that he was able to get the gist of what I was saying. XXX. After minutes of walking and careful searching, we finally found that familiar red cap resting on the bulb of that overgrown weed from earlier and Red's makeshift fishing rod in one of its vines. You again. Give back Red's cap. I snapped. Red was quiet for a few seconds before he stepped towards the Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur, could you please give me back my hat? Please. The overgrown weed stared at him apathetically before one of his vines extended from under his bulb and struck the ground in front of him. I took that as a challenge and began to charge electricity. W wait. We don't want to fight. Says you. I just want my hat back. Please. Don't trust him, Red. He choked you. Would you have preferred to drown? The Bulbasaur asked plainly. Bite me, Weed. I growled as I prepared to shock him. The overgrown Weed began staring at Red for a few seconds before tossing the rod at his feet, then the soggy cap, and began walking past us. I ate your berry, by the way. You jerk. I wanted that berry if this idea didn't work. I shouted as the Bulbasaur disappeared among the grass and reeds. Stupid weed. Red bent over and picked up his things, shaking his wet cap a bit. It certainly seems nicer than before. I wonder why. Who cares? It's a dumb, greedy weed. XXX. Minutes later, we returned to our fishing spot only to find an old human sitting there instead. He also seemed to be fishing but his stick looked a lot less like a stick than Red's did. With a pull and a shout, the old man pulled a flailing orange Pokemon up out of the water. And then he just dropped it back into the river. What sort of madness was that? Good morning, Red mumbled as he sat down a good distance away from the old man. Um, oh, good morning. I didn't think any of the youngsters who lived around here liked fishing. The old man spoke cheerfully. Red mumbled something about not living in Cerulean, but I don't think the old man heard him. But that's quite a pitiful looking rod, son. Why? I doubt that would hold out even against a Magikarp. Uh, no offense. I just want it to make a Pokemon come up to the surface. Once again, Red tied the string around a berry, this time a small pink one, and lowered the berry down into the water once more. It wasn't even a minute when that stick was pulled out of his hands and down into the water, floating up to the surface seconds after that. Red and I gave a growl of frustration at the same time. This really is sad to watch. You just wanna catch a Pokemon. Tell you what, son, I'll let you use my rod here to pull one up to the surface. It's one of them fancy new super rods that are all the rage among pro fishers these days. This'll help you keep a hold of a Pokemon for sure. The man then handed Red the rod, who looked amazed at the sight of the thing, and began giving the younger human instructions on how to use it. He didn't even need to use a berry, just the fancy looking thing dangling on the end called a lure. With a swish, the lure was plopped into the water. We all sat there for minutes, waiting patiently until the rod began to whir and pull forward although Red managed to grip it tightly and pull the rod back. You got a bite. Now reel it in, son. 
The old man exclaimed. Uck. It's. Strong. Red grunted as he began to reel it in. Whatever it was. I watched the water in awe as whatever Pokemon Red had caught was flailing so much that the surface was beginning to froth. Eventually, Red reeled it in with enough force to send it flying out of the water and onto the shore right behind us. Red looked shocked. I caught something. That's something. All right. I mumbled as I stared at the creature. It was small and blue with a tube-shaped snout, three spikes coming out of both sides of its head and a little fin on its back the same pale yellow color as its belly. The creature floundered a bit before finally jumping up onto its curled tail, only to fall over pitifully. What is it? What the he? That's a horsey! The old man exclaimed. I didn't even know you could catch a horsey here. He then added with a mutter, and here I've only been catching blasted Magikarp. Horsey. Right. Pikachu. Go and use Thunder Shock. I nodded and charged up electricity before zapping the horsey. That was all it took to knock it out. Red had a pokey ball out in an instant and threw it at the horsey. It disappeared into the ball, which shook a few times before clicking. Yes. He ran up to the ball and picked it up. It isn't able to walk on land, but it'll have to do. That thing can't even stand without falling over. What's it gonna do in a fight? I asked feeling skeptical of this horsey thing's skill. Red turned to the old man and bowed his head. Thank you very much for lending me your rod, sir. He made to hand it back, but the old man held up a hand and shook his head. Huh. Don't you want back your rod? Nope. Truth is, I thought there was a problem with that rod since I only wound up catching Magikarp, but I guess that was just my bad luck. You were pretty lucky with it though, so why don't you keep it? Could be pretty handy. The old human then added with a mutter, besides, I've gotten sick of fishing. Red's eyes briefly widened in amazement before he regained his usual blank stare and bowed his head once again. Thank you very much, sir. After the man walked away, Red looked down at me with a small smile. What luck. We not only got a new Pokemon, but we also got a fishing rod. Although, he looked at the rod. I'm not sure if I'll ever use this again now that I have Horsey. It might still come in handy. He put both the rod and Horsey's Pokey Ball into his bag. Right. Now let's head back to the Pokemon Center so we can heal Horsey. Then we'll see if we can find any grass-type Pokemon. Finally. I'm sick and tired of just sitting around. I exclaimed happily as I began walking beside Red xxx after heading back into town it seemed as if things were looking up at least until red and i wound up being barreled over by something as it came running down a street i was in a daze for a few seconds before i realized that i was now sitting in red's lap alongside of that familiar and unwanted overgrown weed now looking rather beat up you again do you want to finish what we started or not i growled Red shook his head a few times before noticing the weed. Bulbasaur. Hold it right there. Son. A voice shouted. A male human dressed in blue came running up to us, followed behind by what I could only describe as a giant, tailless polywag with arms. That's a dangerous wild Pokemon that's been attacking people in the city. I've got orders to orders to catch it. Yeah, do that. If it'll keep that overgrown weed out of my sight go right ahead. Bulbasaur was silent, but he began to shudder, making Red stare down at him with an apathetic expression on his face. It isn't wild. It's mine. E.H. Now see here, son. I was told to capture a Bulbasaur with a very distinctive looking bulb, just like that one's. I've been chasing that thing for minutes, so if you expect me to believe that it's yours. It is. I got it from Professor Oak himself. His pokey ball broke while he was out of it, but he wandered off before I could put him inside of a new one. I watched in horror as Red took out a pokey ball that most likely was unused. He really wasn't going to catch that thing, was he? Now Bulbasaur, when I put you in your ball, I need you to stay in it until I tell you to come out. Bulbasaur stared up at him with an apathetic expression for a few seconds before nodding. 
Good. Now, in you go. Red lightly tapped the ball against Bulbasaur's head and it disappeared into the ball in a flash of light. The ball made a clicking noise without even shaking, and in seconds, the overgrown weed was back outside. Hum, it doesn't seem to be as feral as was reported, could it really be another Bulbasaur? The grown man muttered, still, it's got the exact same bulb that I was told to look out for. Red got up and dusted himself off while saying, but if one Bulbasaur has a similar pattern, that means there's a chance for another to have the same pattern, right? Listen to him. He knows what he's talking about, Bulbasaur said, nodding his head. I, on the other hand, was shaking my head. No, he doesn't. Don't believe him. The man stared at Bulbasaur for a few seconds before sucking his teeth and sighing. All right, all right. The fact that it's so well behaved should have been the tip off from the get go. Do yourself a favor, kid. Don't have that Pokemon wandering outside of its ball until we've nabbed the real one, or at least confirm that it's left the city. Have a nice day. The man walked off, his giant polywag waving goodbye before following after him. I wondered why that thing didn't tip off its trainer that something was wrong. I glared up at Red. How could you do this? Why do you always want to catch the Pokemon that try to poison me? I then turned to Bulbasaur. And you, what kind of trouble did you cause? I killed a human, Bulbasaur spoke plainly. Killed a what? It figures. He killed one human and then he tried to kill Red back by the river. All right then, Red spoke, getting our attention. Since you'll only get in trouble if you're seen in the city. How about I release you on one of the routes that doesn't lead to a dead end? For once, Bulbasaur's apathetic expression became one of shock. You're letting me go. As if understanding what he said, Red crouched down and continued, I know what happened to you. I'm sure you don't want to be captured, not after your former owner was killed by Team Rocket. What? His owner died, and Team Rocket was to blame. Did that mean the human he killed was from Team Rocket? Why would he be in trouble for killing such an awful person? You've only been acting this way because you're in pain, right? I understand, because I also lost someone due to Team Rocket, and it still hurts to think about it. But you know, even if the pain never goes away, it helps if you just let out your feelings about it instead of hurting innocent people out of anger. That seemed to do it. The stoic Bulbasaur's eyes watered, and soon, he started to cry and bawl. It's not fair. It's not fair. He was my only friend. He was the only human I could trust. Why did he have to die? I don't want to be alone again. Red hugged the Bulbasaur close to him, stroking his bulb and head. It's okay. You'll be okay. I stared sadly at the two of them until Bulbasaur was done speaking, although he continued to cry. Red attempted to lead the Pokemon away, but he stayed close to his leg. What's wrong? Do you not want to be alone right now? The grass type's response was to mumble as he stared down at the ground. Do you want to come with me, Bulbasaur? The boy got a nod in response. Because I intend to challenge people to Pokemon battles as I travel through Kanto. That means you'd have to train hard while you're with me and listen to my commands. It won't be as easy as living as a pet, or as free as being a wild Pokemon. Are you still sure you want to come? Bulbasaur nodded even quicker. After a few seconds spent in thought, Red started to smile. All right. Then I guess you're part of the team now. Let's get you to the Pokemon Center so you'll get all healed up. After Red returned Bulbasaur into the ball, I faked a sigh of annoyance. Geez. What's with you taking pity on a Pokemon like that? Not that I wasn't happy about his decision. I'm glad Red's as kind as he is. Maybe it wasn't a fear of being alone that made Bulbasaur want to come with us. Maybe he just realized what a nice human Red is. That's what I would like to think, anyway. We spent the rest of the day outside of the city on various routes, either challenging trainers or training to raise our fighting ability. I felt so exhausted by the time we returned to the Pokemon Center that even being healed did nothing to make me feel less tired. 
Red wound up carrying me to bed with him and I fell asleep in his arms. To be honest, even if he did hold on to me a bit too tightly, I slept better that night than I did the day that Nadarino died. XXX. The following day, we spent most of the daytime continuing to train hard. I, of course, got stronger and learned some new moves, although Red complained whenever I used that ability of mine to whip up a wind. Red managed to succeed in teaching Horsey how to move, albeit slowly, on land and struggled to teach Horsey to attack in ways that didn't involve using water. He also learned about Bulbasaur's little quirk. His bulb was actually full of some sort of liquid instead of plant stuff or something. Because of that, he didn't know some moves that Red's Pokedex said his kind ought to know, but he could spray acid and release a sweet-smelling yet poisonous gas. During that time, I also got to learn a little more about my two new teammates. Bulbasaur was kind of like Red. His facial expressions were straight-faced or apathetic most of the time, but he was nicer than he looked. Horsey, on the other hand, was energetic and bubbly often expressing a desire to go into the water that Red was always nice enough to grant, even if it was mostly for training. He reminded me a bit of Nidorino, and that thought compelled me to want to protect the little blue squirt from harm. Red was feeling better today than he was yesterday and so was I. Because of that, he felt compelled to challenge the Cerulean City Gym the moment we returned to town in the middle of the afternoon, and I was eager to win another gym battle. Okay, Pikachu, you're going to be my secret weapon, my ace. If Horsey and Bulbasaur happen to lose, I'll be counting on you to carry us to victory, Red explained once we stood in front of the Cerulean City Gym, a big, blue building decorated in pictures of Pokemon I didn't know. But don't take it personally if we win before you get a chance to battle, okay? I huffed in annoyance. I can beat a bunch of water-type Pokemon easily, you know. I know that since you're an electric type, you'd have a better advantage, but I'd like it if Horsey and Bulbasaur got a taste of what's to come on our journey. You know, for the experience. All right, I don't like it, but all right, I said with a pout. When we entered the gym, the first thing I noticed was the large pool of water in the middle of the room. There were humans swimming in the water, either on or alongside of Pokemon. One of the humans, a male wearing a tight white cap and goggles over his eyes, noticed us and came out of the water to greet us. Welcome. Since you're dressed like that, I guess you're here to challenge Misty to a gym battle. Yes. Could you please lead me to her? Red asked. Certainly. The man then turned around and exclaimed, Hey, everybody. Misty's about to have a gym battle. The people in the water began to clamor and come out. Red seemed to become more tense. The man didn't seem to notice as he gestured for Red to follow him. As Red walked stiffly behind the man and I followed behind him, I looked at the humans trailing behind us. Hey, he's got a Pikachu. Another kid trainer who thinks he can take down Misty's Pokemon with type advantages alone. I can't wait to see how he reacts when Misty beats him. And I can't wait to see how you react when we win. We were led into a room in the back which also had a large pool. But in the center of this pool was a battlefield. Swimming around the water was a young human woman. She had bright orange hair put up into a short ponytail. Hey, what's with the crowd, guys? She noticed Red and stared at him in confusion. And who might you be? My name is Red and I've come to challenge you to a gym battle, Red answered simply. Red, huh? The young woman climbed out of the water, showing that she was dressed in clothing that was small, blue, and exposed a lot of her skin. Her clothes must have been ugly, because Red flinched at the sight of them and started to look away. Ah, isn't that cute? What's wrong? Am I too pretty for you to take or is this your first time seeing a girl in a bathing suit? And no. I mean, I'm fine. Red spoke, sounding panicky. I don't want to stare and seem indecent. The girl giggled before she began to smirk. Well then, Red, as Misty, the Cerulean gym leader, I accept your challenge. XXX. Minutes later, 
Red and I were standing at one end of the pool while Misty stood at the other end. The humans who obviously supported her stood along the wall away from the pool, cheering for her. Yay! Misty! You can do it! Show that kid how tough water types can be! Red, who no longer seemed tense, ignored their cheering and settled for looking between Bulbasaur and Horsey's pokey balls. Who should I start off with? You can start off with me. There's no shame in showing these guys how tough a Pikachu can be. I exclaimed, tugging at his pants leg. Hey, Red, Misty called out, drawing our attention. It's said that only those trainers who have a policy about Pokemon can become pros. Well, my policy is an all-out offensive with water-type Pokemon. You said you've beaten the pewter gym leader. Well, my Pokemon can battle on land and in the water. She held up two fingers. Since you're so young and probably still a beginner, I'll take it easy on you. I'll use only two Pokemon while you can use all that you've got. You'll get the Cascade badge if you beat both of my Pokemon. Is that clear? Yes. Good. She picked up a Poke Ball that was resting next to her feet and released what was inside out onto the battlefield in the middle of the pool. What she sent out looked like a tan-colored star with a red crystal in its center that was lined with gold. Its jewel shimmered as it made an odd sound. My first Pokemon is Staryu. Are you ready, Staryu? Staryu, as she called it, jumped once and spun in the air for a few seconds before landing perfectly on its feet, legs, dot the things it stood on. All right, Red, show me your training policy. Red put away one ball and stared at the other for a few seconds. Time to put your training to good work. Go, Horsey. In a flash of light, Horsey appeared on the battlefield with Staryu. The humans on the sidelines began to talk. He's fighting a water type with another water type. What's he trying to prove? A Horsey. Are you trying to protect yourself from Staryu's water type attacks by hiding behind a type resistance? Misty asked with a smile. Well, Staryu has more than just water type moves. Use tackle. With another odd sounding cry, the Staryu dashed forward, spinning as it did. Jump, Horsey. Horsey sprang back and up into the air, just barely avoiding the Staryu. I smirked as I heard the humans on the sidelines gasp in awe. Now use ink shot. Ink shot. What on earth? Misty didn't finish as Horsey fired a lump of ink down at the Staryu. The force of the shot made the star-shaped Pokemon fall onto its back, but it quickly got back onto its feet, so to speak. Horsey landed perfectly on its tail at the edge of the battlefield. So, you're using Horsey's ink to attack, huh? All right, then I'll use my Pokemon's strengths to its benefit, too. Staryu, jump into the water and dive. Staryu moved over to the edge of the pool and jumped into the water, washing the ink off of itself as it sank below the surface. Use double team and come on out. Just then, five Staryu jumped out of the water and landed onto the battlefield, surrounding Horsey, who looked frightened after being outnumbered. Don't panic, Horsey. Most of them are just illusions. Use bubble to find the real one. Red exclaimed. Staryu. Swift. Horsey took a deep breath and sprayed out large bubbles all around him. But before the bubbles could reach the Staryu, they all seemed to fire glowing yellow stars from the jewels in their centers. The stars pierced through the bubbles and pelted Horsey, steadily forcing him back until he landed in the water. Horsey, are you okay? Red called. The little blue Pokemon poked its head up out of the water, a determined look in his eyes. Red gave a sigh of relief. Good. Stay in the water and attack them with water gun. Staryu, counter with your water gun. Misty exclaimed. The Staryu fired sprays of water from the tips of their top points. Horsey managed to dodge their shots while swiftly swimming around the battlefield, quickly firing shots of his own that dispelled the Staryu illusions until a spray of his water hit the real Staryu. It didn't seem to do any damage, though. Use another swift attack. Dive, Horsey. Horsey dove beneath the water to avoid the barrage of stars. Go in after it. Staryu jumped into the water as well. 
I could see lights flashing beneath the surface. Ripples and bubbles formed along the water's surface. I could only guess what was going on, but I hoped Horsey was winning. Horsey. Use smokescreen to escape. Red commanded. A part of the pool suddenly became clouded with murky black ink. After a few seconds of nervous waiting, the water type came up to the surface, slightly dirtied by his own ink. Staryu came up to the surface as well and fired a barrage of stars at Horsey. The fact that the little guy was able to take all those blows and stay conscious was amazing. Once the barrage had finished, Horsey began to shiver, his little fin flapping quickly. With a cry, he began to spin around. Faster and faster he went until the water around him swirled. It seemed like he'd gone nuts or was throwing a tantrum at first, but then a breeze began to blow inside of the room and a tornado formed around Horsey, a whirlpool forming around in the process. Staryu made what sounded like a surprised noise as it moved closer towards the tornado. Staryu! What are you doing? Swim away! Misty exclaimed. Staryu cried out, and I realized that it was being pulled in. It's like a whirlpool, or a twister. Red commented in awe as we watched the star you get pulled into the whirlpool, spinning around inside of it before getting sucked up into the twister. It got carried all the way up to the very top of the ceiling, at which point, the tornado stopped. Oh, Horsey. Use ink shot. Snapping out of his shock, Horsey aimed up at the falling star you and fired several lumps of ink at it. Each shot hit its target causing the Staryu to flip over several times before the final hit sent it flying back into the ring, landing on its back. The jewel in the center of its body flickered a few times before the light died out. What? Misty's followers shouted loudly. Staryu lost. I gave a sigh of relief at the same time as Red. I expected Horsey to start cheering with joy, but instead, the little blue guy floated over to our side of the field on his back, looking exhausted. I won, yay, Horsey spoke tiredly before his head hit the side of the pool. Red smiled and crouched down to pick up the water-type Pokemon in his hands. He petted Horsey's head lightly before pointing his ball at him. You did very well, I'm proud of you, have a nice, long rest, Red said before returning Horsey into the ball, just as Misty returned her star you. Impressive. I didn't think you had a trick like that up your sleeve. Misty said with a smile. Unlike her human friends, she didn't sound too upset about Staryu losing. Neither did I, Red mumbled. But I'm not gonna waver. Misty exclaimed as she held out another pokey ball. Look out, here comes Starmie. In a flash of light, another star-shaped creature appeared on the battlefield. This one was purple and seemed like it was two star you stuck onto each other. It even had a red gem in its center, but bigger and even fancier looking. Starmy. Red looked down at Bulbasaur's ball. This is going to be tough for you, but still do your best, Bulbasaur. He exclaimed as he sent out Bulbasaur. A Bulbasaur. Doesn't he know that Starmy's part psychic? That win against Staryu was probably just luck. Go, Starmy. You can do it. I growled at the crowd and glared at them. Will you just shut up? I looked back to Red, who was chewing his lower lip. The nervous look in his eye made me worried. Was this thing really that intimidating? Starmie might be Staryu's evolved form, but don't think it has the same tricks. Misty exclaimed. Oh, so that meant that, at least naturally, it was supposed to be stronger than that Staryu. But at least Bulbasaur still had the advantage, right? Grass beats water. I mean, as far as I could remember from yesterday and the days I spent training with Charmander, the big weed's worst enemies were birds and fire. So unless Starmie suddenly developed wings and a beak and started breathing fire, he was sure to win. Right. Tell you what. You can have the first attack. Red made an annoyed growl. She's that confident we can't win that she's giving us the first move. I frowned and started shouting, Hey, Weedy. You better not lose, or you'll make us look bad. Bulbasaur. Use poison gas. Red commanded. Bulbasaur's bulb shuddered and thick, purple smoke was spewed around the battlefield, making it a bit more difficult to see. 
Vine whip. Bulbasaur's vines shot out from under his bulb and went towards the Starmie. He quickly lashed the star-shaped Pokemon in several parts of its body, and it seemed to be pretty effective. They wrapped around it, and seconds later, acid was sprayed out from his bulb and onto the Starmie. Now it's our turn. Starmie, use Psychic to free yourself. At Misty's call, the Starmie's gem began to glow with a bright blue color. Bulbasaur also began to glow the same bright blue, and in seconds, his vines were pushed off of the Starmie and struck him in the face. While he was reeling from the stinging pain, Misty made another command. Now use Psychic to push that Bulbasaur into the water and go after it. Once again, Bulbasaur glowed bright blue before an unseen force pushed him off of the battlefield and into the water. Hey, that's cheating, I shouted. You can't just throw him into the water when he can't swim. As Bulbasaur splashed helplessly in the water, the area he was splashing in slowly became tinged with purple. Bulbasaur, try to climb back up there with your vines. Red exclaimed. Bulbasaur's vines attempted to grip the edge of the pool, but, since they weren't exactly fingers or claws, they only slid off. No. Starmie. Jump into the water and approach Bulbasaur, said Misty. The Starmie jumped into the water next to Bulbasaur. In the midst of splashing, the grass type flailed his vines against the Starmie. Now spin until you make a whirlpool. The star-shaped Pokemon began to spin around quickly and, just like Horsey, a whirlpool formed around it. However, there was no tornado, so Bulbasaur was dragged down under the water instead. After a few seconds, vines shot out from underneath the surface, flailing about. Red panicked and returned Bulbasaur to his ball. Just because a grass-type Pokemon goes up against a water-type one, it doesn't mean that it's going to win. Especially if the fight's on the water-type's turf. Misty proclaimed proudly as her Starmie hopped back onto the battlefield. Cheater. You're a cheater. He can't even swim. I shouted angrily waving my paw at the human girl. I growled as I heard her human friends cheer at Bulbasaur's defeat, those jerks. Meanwhile, Red had released Bulbasaur in front of him and began helping him spit up water. Why can't you swim? If there are plants that float in water, you should be able to, too. Bulbasaur glared at me weakly. Does this bulb look like a lily pad to you? Are you okay, Bulbasaur? Red asked. I'm fine, Bulbasaur said with a nod. I like water, but not in that sort of situation. It's my fault. I should have realized that her Starmie would have at least one psychic type attack. Red glanced up at Misty's side of the field. But at least you managed to poison it as well as damage it quite a bit. Pikachu should be able to take it down a lot easier now. Oh, good. I didn't nearly drown for nothing. Take a well-deserved rest. After returning Bulbasaur into his ball, Red looked at me. This is it, Pikachu. Time to be the ace. He held out my pokey ball. Get inside so you can over there. Fine. I pressed the button on the front and disappeared inside. I was only inside for a few seconds before everything appeared before me in a flash of light and I landed on the ground. Standing a few feet away was the Starmie which was a lot bigger up close. It made some odd sounds, but among them, I could barely make out words. I will crush you like I do the rest of your kind, little Pikachu, the Starmie spoke in a voice unlike any Pokemon's I'd heard. Its warped and distorted voice almost made its words unable to be heard unless someone was as close as I was. We'll see who crushes who. I snapped electricity crackling from my cheeks due to my eagerness to beat this star thing. Pikachu. Use quick attack and double team. At Red's order, I began darting about the ring, creating copies of myself after every few seconds until it seemed like a half dozen Pikachu were running around. At that point, I began ramming into the Starmie while it was distracted with the fakes. Its body was hard and pointy but I continued tackling it from various points. Starmie. Use Psychic. I attempted to ram into the Starmie to stop it from using those Psychic powers, but I was a second too late. I found myself frozen in place, 
mere inches away from the starmy and close enough to see my reflection in its gem. Then, I felt a powerful blow that affected my entire body and shoved me backwards until I came to a rolling stop. I'm fading fast. Need to rest, the starmy spoke as its gem flickered. It's weak. Finish it off with thunder shock. I heard Red exclaim. I was soon back on my feet and charging up electricity. I was so preoccupied that I couldn't really hear Misty's next command over the loud crackling I was making. Eventually, I fired a zapping bolt of electricity at the Starmie, and at the same time, so did it, a much bigger and more fearsome looking bolt of electricity that wound up consuming my own and striking me. Although it was an electric type move, it still really hurt. More than I was expecting. When a drop of water goes up against an entire ocean, it winds up getting consumed, Misty spoke smugly. Starmy is weak against electric type attacks, so to counter that, I thought it to use thunder, it's the strongest electric type move there is, and the only way for it to lose would be if a more powerful electric attack overwhelmed its thunder. Thunder shock, though, is the weakest electric type move, so it wound up being consumed by my Starmy's thunder. S seriously, that's, not fair. I exclaimed as Misty's human friends cheered. I looked back at Red and he seemed to be in shock. I couldn't take it. I got mad and I wound up trying to tap inside of me for some sort of attack that would help me take this thing down and show everyone not to underestimate me. I felt pain surging through my body for a split second before I blew out bubbles. I went through that pain for bubbles. Oh, come on. I whined as the bubbles floated over to the Starmie and popped against its gem. Naturally, it did nothing. Well, that was something, Misty commented. So, Red, do you wanna give up now? There's no shame in admitting that you can't win against my Starmie. I looked back at Red, who looked as if he was really considering giving up. Don't you dare do that. I shouted as I pointed a paw at him, drawing his attention to me. We'll continue until an actual winner is decided. I smiled before putting back on my determined face and turning back to the Starmie. Misty made a sound of annoyance. All right then, Starmie, recover. The Starmie's flickering gem began to glow a bright gold, and so did the rest of its body. Eventually, the bruises and injuries it had been given seemed to vanish and its gem stopped flickering. It looked like it had healed itself but it winced a few seconds afterwards. Right, because Bulbasaur poisoned it. That recover trick probably didn't cure it of poisoning, but the fact that it could heal itself was troublesome. Pikachu, use quick attack and double team once more. Again, but they already saw that trick before. I wound up running around the ring again, creating copies as I went along. Bubble Beam, Starmy. I was eventually dodging a spray of foam and bubbles that looked way stronger than the pitiful ones that I wound up making. When one copy was hit and disappeared, I made two more to take its place while also jumping and ducking over the foam sprays and quickly tackling into the Starmie's hard body before hiding myself among my clones once again. It was exhausting, but I knew I couldn't stop. The fight went on like this for a while before Red gave another command. Now start using slam and knock it back into the water. I almost stopped running when I heard that. Wasn't that bad. Still, I changed my strategy from just tackling into Starmie to striking it back with my tail when I ran past. The force behind my tail strikes were surprisingly stronger than those of my tackles and I was soon pushing the star-shaped creature to the edge of the battlefield. Close enough. Starmie. Use Surf. Just when I was about to deliver the last blow and push Starmie into the water, its gem glowed blue once again. But instead of being repelled by a psychic force, I was swept up into a wave of water that suddenly overtook the ring and wound up pulling me into the water along with Starmie. Now make a whirlpool. In seconds, I wound up being caught inside of a whirlpool. I struggled hard to stay above the surface, shouting out and trying to take deep breaths of air just to swallow water. Pikachu. Thunder shock. Without thinking twice about it, I took a deep breath and put my effort towards charging up electricity. 
I wound up being dragged under the surface by the whirlpool's force, but I refused to lose my concentration. Still holding my breath, I unleashed the biggest amount of electricity I could muster. The previously dark water seemed to light up and I suddenly no longer felt myself being pulled along by the whirlpool. At that point, I could no longer hold my breath. I flailed about and tried in vain to swim up to the surface, but couldn't. Soon, my vision blurred and I lost consciousness. XXX. When I came to, I was inside of my pokey ball. I immediately popped out of it, eager to breathe in real air, and landed on the cold floor that I came to recognize as the Pokemon Center in Cerulean City. Oh, it's you again. I recognized the exasperated sounding voice of a nurse from the center. She was carrying a tray with three pokey balls, two of which were Bulbasaur's and Horsey's. I know I can't convince you to go back into your ball, so I won't try. The nurse resumed walking and I ran ahead, through a hall of a many doors and glass windows that showed Pokemon being healed inside of machines or getting painful looking surgery. I stopped for a few seconds to look into a window when I noticed a star you being tended to. It made me think of Misty, and more importantly, whether or not we beat her. Eventually, I made it to a pair of doors that slid open the moment I got close enough. I ran out into the lobby and jumped onto the counter, waiting for the nurse to finally catch up. When she did, she ignored my annoyed expression to put down the tray and speak into a microphone. Red Ketchum, your Pokemon have been healed. I repeat. Red Ketchum, your Pokemon have been healed. I spent a few minutes sitting on the counter as more trainers came and went. Eventually, I saw Red approaching and, out of excitement, I jumped off the counter and onto his head, throwing him off balance. Did we do it? Did we win? Tell me we won. Please say we won. I felt Red's hands grab my body before he pulled me off held me in one arm as he fixed his hat, and picked up his pokey balls with a quick, thanks, spoken to the nurse. Come on, say something. I need to know. I needed to know that we were the stronger one. That I was stronger now. The stronger I got, the better I could protect Red and the others from anything and anyone that would hurt them. I wound up being carried up into the room we had been staying in since yesterday. I was set down on the bed, and in seconds, I was joined by Bulbasaur and Horsey. Red stared at us for a few seconds before digging through his bag for something. He pulled out that shiny red case of his and opened it to show us a blue, raindrop-shaped badge pinned right next to the boulder badge. I was the first one to start cheering, and Horsey started doing the same while Bulbasaur looked confused. Why are you acting so happy? Bulbasaur asked. I have no idea. Horsey exclaimed happily. I stared at the water type in disbelief before snapping, we won. Don't cheer if you don't understand. Red reached down and petted both Bulbasaur and Horsey affectionately. You both did really well for your first gym battle. Yeah, I knocked out a star you all by myself. Horsey cheered. He looked at Bulbasaur. What did you do? Nearly drown. Bulbasaur muttered darkly. Don't be so hard on yourself. You wore that star me down a lot, I said, deciding to be nice for a change. Besides, he really did help out. I still almost drowned. Take a compliment. You. I was interrupted by Red stroking my head as well. I found myself looking into his smiling face and stilled. You did really well, too, Pikachu. I'm really proud of the work you put in. If it could be seen under all of my fur. Red would have seen me blushing as I smiled. Yeah, well, I'm the ace, right? Of course I did good work. What's an ace? Horsey asked. Probably something he made up. Bulbasaur muttered as he shook his head. After that, we had our small dinner of berries and store-bought food. Between bites, Red spoke about what we were going to do next. We're going to get up early tomorrow morning so we can leave the city. We'll head south to Saffron City. There's a gym there, too, but our destination is Vermilion City. Oh, right. Wasn't Red going on yesterday about Vermilion City and some cruise thing? 
I have tickets to attend a party on board a cruise ship that's docked there. Maybe we could see some people with Pokemon you can't find in Kanto. There's also a gym in Vermilion, too, and the leader there specializes in electric-type Pokemon. We'll challenge them first before going to challenge the gym in Saffron, after we go to the party, at least. All right, my type of challenge at last. No giant rocks immune to electric attacks and no rings surrounded by water. And the city is next to the ocean, so you can go swimming, horsey. I blanched and dropped a berry I had been eating. The ocean, as in water. Yay. Horsey and began to jump in place excitedly. I can go swimming in the ocean. Bulbasaur shuddered and spoke flatly. I don't want to go near any water that's deeper than I can stand in for the rest of my life. I sighed and held my paws over my eyes. I feel the same way.